I'm Katie Couric. Welcome to Eye to Eye. The battle against cancer has so many heroes. We discovered one inside the CBS News family. Last year, producer Diane Renault was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, a disease with just a 10% survival rate and one that claimed my sister's life as well. But she told colleague Sandra Hughes she's determined to be in that 10%. So from the time that they discovered there was something in your pancreas to the time of this pretty major surgery it wasn't very long. It was about three weeks. During that time, I mean, that's, that's a whirlwind. That's very fast from going from healthy working mom to major surgery. What, what got you through that, that three weeks? Coming to work, a supportive husband, your, your family around you? Well, I mean, you know, the truth is you sometimes you just do things because you have to do them. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sick, but I'm also, I have responsibilities. I have a, you know, I have a family, I have work. I can't just, you know, I have to do those things. And as much as, as much as I was extremely worried about being sick, I also wanted to, you know, participate in the rest of my life that I was, you know, that I'm very attached to. You know, things have to be compartmentalized. You have to remember that it's time to work and then it's time to be, you know, a patient. You know, and see, keep those things separate. That's the best way. I guess people probably, um, you know, they, they look at Elizabeth Edwards or they look at Tony Snow and they wonder, how do you get up in the morning? How do you go to work? How do you continue on a presidential campaign? How do you produce a story? How do you make phone calls and set up interviews when all the time you're thinking, I have cancer, I could die. How do I keep persevering through this? I mean, the answer is, is really, that's, it's, it's better to persevere through those things. It's more, you know, it's more rewarding. It's more, it, it, it's, it's more fulfilling to persevere through those things than it is to just, you know, become lost in being a cancer victim. It's, it seems like it, it, it's a big deal, but in fact, the part that's, it's really the most rewarding part of, of the whole process. I'd much rather be cooking dinner, cleaning my house, taking care of my family, going to work, than being sick. So if there's a distraction, which is what all these things really become, is just distractions, things to keep you from thinking about that you're sick, they're very welcome. We all hear how hard, how difficult chemotherapy is. Um, what sort of gets you, you know, your light at the end of the tunnel on something like that? Because that's months and months and months, you know. You know, I remember you telling me, you know, your doctor would never give you an endpoint, And, you know, being type A personalities, we want to know, well, okay, this is the start point. When will the end point be? And when will I be right. going back yeah, to work? Yeah, when am I done with this? And when, exactly. how can I put this all, you know, back behind me? I mean, really, that's the thing is people just want to be, they just want to put this chapter behind them. They just want to go back to the old ways. I mean, that's what I would always say. I just want to be back to being the old person, you know, my old self. But you get through it because it's the, you are participating in the process of getting healthy. And that's really why you, that's what allows you to deal with the chemotherapy and to deal with all of the side effects of chemotherapy because that is part of the process of getting healthy and you can't get to the other side of the tunnel without taking the medicine. Knowing that, you know, you had a place to go back, a, a job to go back to and the, you know, the boys, your husband, not that you wouldn't be motivated, obviously, to get well if you didn't have those things. But is that, did that give you sort of that extra energy or oh, that extra, think, you know, I think whatever? It has a lot to do with, I think it has a lot to do with getting healthy because you feel like somebody's waiting for you to come back. If you don't have a reason to get better, I mean, you don't, you, you know, you can either be identified by your illness or you can be identified by something else. And I chose to be not identified by cancer. I choose to be identified by, you know, a, a working mother, which is, you know, I, that's what I want to go back to. And if you know that people are waiting for you to come back, you feel 
motivated to get healthy. People who are diagnosed who don't live in places like LA or New York or Chicago or Miami, you know, m major cities um, with, you know, these teaching hospitals and, you know, great doctors at their disposal. Um, what kind of advice would you give them as far as, you know, really being your own advocate and, and getting in there and making sure you're getting the right treatment and the most aggressive treatment? Um, I think you have to sort of, you know, hunker down and really steel yourself up for a the fight and just say, it's okay if I ask dumb questions. It's okay if I call and ask to talk to strangers who don't know me. It's, it's okay because you have to advocate for your, you have to advocate for yourself for, because it's your health. I mean, I think that, that that was one of the things that was most surprising but at the same time most invigorating is by advocating for yourself, by getting in there and asking questions, you, you actually find out you know, more about what's going on, how, what new drugs are out there, what advantages there are to going to certain doctors, and how important it is. I mean, this is your health. There's nothing else that's more important than your health. If you're not going to advocate for that, what else are you going to work for? I mean, because in the end, my, you know, my career, my family, they don't mean, nothing means anything without my health because I can't get to the next step. So if I'm not going to work hard for that, and that's what you need to, you, you know, I think people need to say, when you, when you are given a diagnosis for cancer, you know, at some point, find the energy and find the resolve to do as much research as you can to make sure you're getting the best care. Because that is actually what will put you in the survivor category.